things to see. Maybe quiet boys or do little stuff. Hey, Phoenix is rising. Forgive the noise. I have just stepped outside to take this, uh, respond to this video. Sis Queen is real right. Um, I have been working at uh, a site and I have never experienced anything like it before, but because I have done my work, because I went through the dark night of the soul, because uh, so that the devil wouldn't have a foothold and his minions wouldn't have a foothold. And this person is demonic. There's two of them and they're covert narcissists. And <laughs> it, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and they both swap. And I've never seen anything like it. I've never um, seen so acutely with spiritual and physical eyes, how somebody can, I mean, like, I mean, just like murderous rage is what I saw in the one that uh, I work around. And then the other was uh, doing some type of Jezebel um, succubi thing. And, but then when, when her advances weren't um, reciprocated, and I didn't, meaning that I didn't open up, not meaning that there's romance, but just meaning that I didn't open up, because a lot of times people will come to you when they know that you've shut your spirit off from them and that they can know, they can't uh, attach a tentacle, a demonic tentacle um, to them, to you. Um, and usually they go for my cranium. They go straight for my crown. Um, and then the others, sometimes they'll go straight for my heart. So, you know, um, two powerful things. And <laughs> so what they'll do is they'll try and make small talk uh, to open you up. And sh this person did this, but I could, and I could feel the oozing, um, uh, you know, just off of the whole interaction. And I said, nope, shut down. And I did. And she thought that she had had an opening and whatever in her spirit form, she was trying to dig into my crown, dig into my Akashic records or my mind or whatever, and uh, shut her right off. Um, the other one who is a racist as well, uh, has for the last uh, three months, I haven't been working here for very long. And that's what's uh, astonishing too, is because they get triggered, covert narcissists, cluster B personalities get triggered by anything. Bird poop, you know, lands two feet from them. Oh gosh. All right. I had to get to the business of security, but, uh, um, so when you, when you say no, it's a wound because why they are emotionally dysregulated and they don't like being told no, right? They have, it's not even, sometimes it's not even about trauma. That can be a possibility, but some, you know, that's unhealed. But most of the time they have just found a way through the occult, whether they know it or not, to manipulate people and bully people and get what they want. And then they will do it as a group. That's where gang stalking came from. I mean, well, gang stalking came from, uh, uh, the, the Nazi regime, but, <laughs> you know, um, but so anyway, this person, every time I would come by her, uh, or when I would show, let me say this, when I would show up to work and I would start my, my patrol, she would make sure that she intersected with me in some way, shape or form. And it did not matter where I was like I, and I purposely avoided her because we have CCTV. Now I have mentioned this before in other videos that they will use whatever is at their disposal, especially if they are in some type of man position of power, they will use whatever is at their disposal to exploit you, to embarrass you, to shame you, to slander you, to get you fired. Right? So, but <laughs> I play chess, not checkers. And I would always make sure that I was over exaggerating my getting out of the way. And that also upset them. It also upset them that I would put my interactions with them in my daily report. 
because in putting my interactions with them in my daily report, it became a legal document. In it becoming a legal document, now you have to explain why you did what you did. Okay? Now that's just for me, for my profession. But this woman, and then when she wasn't trying to run me over with her cart or intersect or, you know, shadow me throughout the library, right? Um, and she would do it when people weren't, weren't looking. It's microaggression. And when people weren't looking, she would go, go uh, by me and I would feel her projecting this murderous rage, you know, and it would be affecting my digestive system, everything else like that. Okay. So, <laughs> but both of these covert narcissists loved the fact they tag teamed. So the other one also, this other one who was trying to run me over with her cart or intersect with me or just, you know, be everywhere I was, um, especially if I was around the other covert narcissist because it gave was giving, you know, we're in a relationship. So I was like, OK, I'm not trying to do anything. I just literally just started working here and already. So she was playing the I guess the butch role and I am lesbian myself. So and I, you know, don't get mad at me. Don't come for me. But <laughs> Whatever role she was playing, she took it upon herself to try and protect uh, the other one, the, who was an assistant manager, by the way. And so, but one other thing I understood is that the, the people have to understand that these guys, this is not, they will work within, and I've said this in another video, narcissist cluster B personalities work within the system, work within the societal norms. Whatever is popular, they are going to be and more. You dig it? So if you have a uh, job that says, don't do this, don't do that, they're, no, they're gonna say, okay, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. Because what, they're micromanaging and they're, they're doing it uh, in, uh, insidiously. They're doing it, like I had this woman fat shaming me um, and I mean, literally turned her head, squinted her eyes and said something out, something came out of, this, uh, out of her mouth and you know, but she thought that nobody was listening. She honestly thought that nobody was listening. You know, I heard what she said. And then there was bananas on the table. I had uh, recently, I had both of them uh, put uh, bananas on my porch, which which is the, of the building that I live in. Not, you can't come into the building, dude. So it was kind of bizarre, but it is very exhausting and it's very childish and it's very, ang it's, it makes you anxious because I felt it. And that's what I had to say. I said I cut it off. So I report everything that they do. Um, I, I am not afraid to get up in somebody's face and videotape. I actually had them um, try and delete all the files because they were getting mad. So, you know, now I'd rather have them on the defensive than me because I don't want to go looking for another job before the time. You know, and that's something that they will do. When you shine light and you don't share it, with people, you don't throw your pearls to swine, they are going to try and extinguish it. You know, I mean, I woke up a couple mornings ago and including this morning actually, not knowing if I was going to survive because some people are so in, entrenched in their witchcraft and so, uh, so obsessed about, you know, having, um, getting revenge, you know? So <laughs> I'm dealing with two covert narcissists who to the public, literally, they all, they both sound sweet. It's like they've split, they've, they've shared each other's personalities. They both sound sweet. They both sound like they care about other people. They go out of their way if they can, for show. But both of these uh, covert narcissists are not, uh, of course, healthy. And that's something, you know, with their heart, and that's why it frustrates people. But one thing I've learned, do not react. Do not react openly. Gray rock, and then go home, journal, cry, throw, have something to punch, go on a run, do what you gotta do. But in, <sighs> bye. Nice <to> bye. <laughs> but in person, don't say anything. So that's all I got to say about that. But remember, Phoenix is rising. Your blessings are in your ashes. Rise.